In these highly divisive times, what does it mean for each of us to step forward to rediscover what we share in common and how we can actively build on it? Today, I'm delighted to share with you the opening reflection in my new book called Stepping Forward, A Positive Practical Path to Transform Our Communities and Our Lives, and to talk about the implications of this opening reflection for each of us. Hi, I'm Rich Harwood. Welcome to another episode of Harwood Half Hour. I'm speaking to you from my office in Bethesda, Maryland. Shoot me a message and let me know where you're tuning in from today and uh, make sure that you can hear me. And if you can't, please let me know. The question for today as I read this reflection is, what does it mean for you to step forward? What does it mean for you to step forward, especially in these trying times that we're living through? You know, today's a bit of departure from our typical Harwood half hour. Usually I lay out a, a, a challenge and then lay out three or four specific steps that you can take. But today, you know, our this new book that I wrote is is uh, coming out October 1st. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. And, um, and we thought that it would be fun uh, to share with you the opening reflection from the book. I've never read it before. This is the first time I'm reading it out loud, even to myself. And, uh, and so I'll be sharing that with you. Um, I'm about to start a, a speaking tour on this book. I, I leave on Saturday of this week to go to Sacramento to speak there. Then I go to Paradise, California, um, which you know is um, in many respects leveled by the campfire there. And so I'm gonna be talking about what does it mean for a community to step forward and, and recover from something like that. I come back for a few days to do our annual Harwood Summit in Philadelphia at the National Constitution Center. And then I take off again for Hartsville, South Carolina, then Greenville, South Carolina. Then I go to Des Moines, Iowa, and then it's, it's off to a number of other communities through 2019. We've got a lot of other communities already booked for 2020, and we actually, I think, even have one in 2021 booked. But there's still time. I'd love to come to your community and talk about this message. Um, and it's this, you know, I wrote this book because like you, I suspect, I believe we can do better. We can be better. When I travel across the country, so many people tell me um, that regardless of who they voted for in the last elections, that they believe that our country is on the wrong track, that, as I said, we can do better, we can be better. And I think the question today is, how is it in these divided, polarized, highly acrimonious times, how do we bring out the best in each other? How do we bring out the best in ourselves as opposed to the worst in ourselves? How do we, how do we bring out a better country that we know is here, but sometimes we have difficulty finding, sometimes we have difficulty expressing, sometimes we have difficulty sustaining in our daily lives. And so in this book I wanted, and in this book tour that I'm doing, I wanted to sound the call that look, we don't need to accept what's happening in the country today we can take a more positive, practical, a more hopeful path forward. If we only decide to step forward and make it happen on our own and with one another, we can do this. We can do this. And in order to get on a more hopeful path, I believe that we're going to need to rediscover what we share in common amid our differences. Look, there are real differences. We all know it. We don't have to sugarcoat it. But amid those differences, we can discover what we do share in common, and we can find ways to actively build upon that and restore our belief that we can get things done together again. I believe in this book, what I say and what I, why I wrote it, why I'm sounding the call is that not only do we need to rediscover what we share in common and actively, actively build upon it, but we need to value the human spark within each of us and draw upon our wherewithal, our know-how, our wisdom that we already have. We have this within us and among us. We can bring it together in shared collective ways to figure out pathways forward in our local communities where I believe much of the action needs to take place. And here's the other thing for you individually. I believe that when we get on this more hopeful path, when you get on this more hopeful path, we can bring, you can bring more meaning and purpose to your individual life. And 
what so many people across our country tell me is that amid the noise and confusion that's all around us, how is it that we can regain? How is it that we can rediscover? How is it that we can reclaim a greater sense of purpose and meaning in our individual lives? And that's what this book's about. So what I'd like to do is read, here's the cover of the book, the book's out. Um, you can pre-order it today. Um, it'll be delivered by October 1st. Um, but we have some advanced copies here. And uh, I just want to read this opening reflection. It's really short. Um, and, you know, this is something I wrote. I think I wrote this like in an hour. It just, it just popped out. And I, and I knew I wanted to start the book this way. And so the reflection is called Here I Am. And, um, and here it goes. First time I've, I've ever read it out loud. For as long as I can remember, my favorite words in the Bible have been, here I am. These three tiny words hold huge meaning, not only for people of religious faith, but also for those of us concerned about our shared ability to create the kinds of communities and lives we want. At this moment in America, these three words call on us to engage with one another, to take greater responsibility for where we are and who we can become. The words here I am re appear repeatedly throughout the Bible, from Abraham to Samuel to Isaiah and elsewhere. But the story this phrase reminds me of the most involves Moses. Standing before the burning bush, at first trembling and hiding his face, he ultimately answers God's call by saying, here I am. In that moment, Moses, who doubts his capabilities, his strength, his voice, his identity, does something that is desperately needed in our communities and our country today. In his moment of trial, Moses makes himself visible. He does not hide. He does not turn away. He does not seek cover. He makes an active choice to be present. Then God gives him a great task. Go to the mighty Egyptian Pharaoh and demand the release of the Israelites from the bonds of slavery. But in the face of this task, Moses hesitates. He asks God, who am I? Once more, his self-doubt is palpable. He is filled with confusion. He thinks he is unworthy. But as we know, Moses proves otherwise. He heeds the call. He steps forward. He acts. What are the implications of Moses' words and actions for each of us today? Indeed, what about us? Will we act? At the burning bush, Moses is asked to take action that none of us will be called to do. But we can still learn from his story. When he hears the call, he actively makes a choice, he chooses to step forward, he engages, he shows his face. He accounts for himself too. There is something uniquely powerful in this personal act. In our society, accountability often means following laws, achieving certain measurable goals, or making formal reports. What I love about the story of Moses and the burning bush is that the idea of accounting for oneself takes on a much larger, deeper meaning. It asks each of us to assume full responsibility for who we can become and what we must do. It summons us to measure ourselves based on whether we are living up to the pledges and promises we have made to ourselves and to others. This is not about a typical professional accountability. It is a covenant, a covenant we make with one another about the kind of world we seek to create together. So as you read this book, I ask you to keep in mind the following questions. These are questions people ask me all the time as I work with them in communities. How can I come together with others 
to truly make a difference? How do I make the kinds of leaps in my life that will enable me to have the impact I seek in my community and elsewhere? How can my engagement reflect the best in myself and in others? How can I unleash a greater sense of shared responsibility in my community and in my work? And how do I find the courage and humility to take such a path? There are times when I have fears and self-doubts about my own capabilities. We all do. We often believe that someone else is more equipped, better prepared, or more articulate for what needs to be said and done. We fear the unknown. At times, we fear the other. We step back when people's anger and grievances turn into words and emotions we find hurtful and uncomfortable. But we must take the lesson of Moses and make ourselves visible. We must be present, alive, and awake in the moment. We must be here. This requires each of us to face our challenges head on if we are to tackle the challenges our society confronts. We need not know on our own all the answers to these challenges. None of us can. Nor what must we go it alone. Positive change never happens in that way. Instead, we must simply keep these three tiny words in mind. Here I am. So that's the opening reflection from this new book called Stepping Forward, a Positive Practical Path to Transform Our Communities and Our Lives. The book's divided into three sections. The first section is called Trapped, which covers the noise and confusion and the sources of that noise and confusion in our lives and public lives today. The second section is called Shared Responsibility, and in it I lay out seven principles about this positive practical path that we can take to create a more hopeful society. And then the third section um, is called Welcome Home, and I, I named it that because um, this is about you. It's about what does it mean for each of us to make the choices we need to make, the intentional choices we need to make to step forward. And the last chapter in the book is called The Rediscovery, which I really love. It's, a, it's another very short chapter. And basically, it's about remembering so, so many of the things that we need to do require a rediscovery. They're things we already know how to do. Sometimes I think we've forgotten them or they get caked over in the busyness and noisiness of our lives. Um, but if we simply can rediscover so many of these things, we can get on a more hopeful path. Um, I thought that opening the book with this reflection was important because it's a personal call to each of us, a personal call to you that in order for us as a society to get on a more hopeful path, we need more of us. I need you to step forward and help us get on this path. That we need to make ourselves more visible, that we need to make ourselves more present, that we need to make ourselves more awake, that we need to be here, right here. Not always thinking about all these other things we need to do, but what's the thing right here that we need to make ourselves visible and present and awake for? And how can we step forward to engage with others around us so that we can create a more hopeful society? As I mentioned, there are so many things that Moses encountered and that you and I each encounter that can make it difficult right now to step forward and say, here I am. It's easier to let someone else step forward. It's easier not to make ourselves visible because we're afraid that we might be criticized. It's Harder to say, here I am, and to lead because in so many cases when we lead, others try to chop us down or question our motivations or question our intent. And yet, as you know well, uh, in order for us to get on a more hopeful path, more of us are going to have to step forward and make ourselves visible. And I know that so many of you already have made yourself visible, that you already have stepped forward. And hopefully what this book will do is is give you more inspiration, help you find that 
path of things that you can do to accelerate and deepen your progress to create a more hopeful society, that it will give you a greater sense of possibility about what we can do together to make more progress. And I hope what this book does and what I know so many of us need to do is that in order to step forward, we need to summon two other things that I write about in the book that are in the second to the last chapter in a, in a chapter called I Thought My Soul Would Rise and Fly, uh, that we need to summon a greater sense of courage, that we need the courage to step forward, to put a stake in the ground, to, to make a claim to what we really believe in and what importantly we are for, not simply against. And that, as I've said so many other times before, and I'll say it again, that courage on its own is hubris, can lead to hubris and arrogance, and that along with courage, therefore, we need a sense of humility, a sense that we can't go it alone on our own, that we need others to discover our shared sense of purpose, that we need others to rediscover what we share in common, that none of us on our own have the answers that we need each other to figure out the pathways forward, um, and that inevitably, as conditions change around us, we need the humility to pick up that stake we put in the ground and move it to a new destination, a new place, so that we can recalibrate what we need to do as we move forward. And so, in closing, this is a short Harwood half hour. Um, if this resonates with you, which I hope it does, which I'm finding it does as I travel around the country and talk about the ideas in this book. If it resonates with you, I hope you'll order a copy of this book for yourself. I hope, honestly, you'll order a copy for other people you know as well, that you'll go to Amazon and order it. You can go to our website um, and order it as well. The book um, comes out officially on October 1st, but you can do pre-orders today. You can register also for a live online event that I'm gonna be holding on October 1st, the day the book comes out. Um, and you can find that uh, on our website or on the book's website, um, which is called steppingforwardbook.org. Just to say it again, steppingforwardbook.org, all one word. Um, and I hope you'll join me on that day um, so that we together can begin to step forward and get on a more hopeful path in our community and all across this country. So thank you again for joining me for another episode of Harwood Half Hour. As you know, we're celebrating uh, our 30th anniversary. Um, our work uh, is rooted in a philosophy of civic faith and the practice of turning outward. Um, this philosophy and this practice has spread to all 50 states in the United States and to about 40 countries around the world. Um, we have rededicated ourselves on this 30th anniversary to find ways to recommit our work to you and to find more relevant and impactful ways to engage with you, to support your work, to create more hopeful communities and a more hopeful society, both in America and around the globe. And so um, if you want more information about the Institute, go to our website, theharwoodinstitute.org. I would love for you to share this Harwood Half Hour episode with your friends, your colleagues, your families. It's important to get this message out. Yes, it's important to sell books. I wouldn't deny that. But more importantly, I think you know I'm in this because I believe deeply that every person deserves a shot at the American dream here in the US and to fulfill their God-given potential and that the only way that we can achieve these things is to work together, to cross dividing lines, to figure out what we share in common, and to find ways to actively build upon it. And that's why I remain committed to this work. That's why I need you to help spread this message with me. That's why I wanna work with you so that we can build these types of communities. Be well.